I need to get a water up here. Sure. You, have a you want the same glass? Sure. <laughs> Anticipate cases. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I wore long johns. When I get nervous, I kind of sweat and then I kind of get the shakes, so I wore long johns. But they're sitting right here, so it kind of feels like my pants are down, which is your first time on stage isn't going to be a good thing. Uh, thanks for coming out to comedy and uh, UP. And uh, you all just imagine me with my pants down. <laughs> my name is David. I've never done this before, so this is a bucket list uh, item for me. I'm also not a professional, so there's going to be a lot of reading, but uh, I know how to read, so it shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> if someone doesn't know how to read out there, that wasn't like a, you don't know how to read joke. <laughs> that's sad. <laughs> You're not sad, but that's sad. That's not going to work out there. Okay. So, thanks for coming out. I know 20 bucks is a lot of money. Uh, apparently there's some free toilet paper if you aren't happy with the, the performance. <laughs> you can just help yourself. It's like one roll per person. One roll. Uh, yeah, so... No facts. No facts. <laughs> 20 bucks is enough for like a family in Zimbabwe to live for like a month. And here you could like use that 20 bucks to drive to Port Alberta and then you could take out a thousand dollars and then you could live for a month. So that's Canada, but we love living here. Totally ADHD, so that's going to be a problem. <laughs> can we get, like, can we get some help here? Anyone want to see that? Yes. Let's just wait, we're going to wait for it to go away. <laughs> <laughs> I have no problem saying fuck, but I, I was raised in a house full of women, so uh, we didn't get to swear a lot. And like living out here, you don't talk to a lot of people. You don't really get to swear a lot because it's kind of like, you know, fuck, fucking rain. <laughs> but when you drive into Port Alberni, you get to swear a little bit if you're alone. But fuck the way, come on, fuck. <laughs> I've always wanted to be a comedian and I really I look up to stand up comedians and I think a lot of a lot of stand up comedians have probably the same problems that I've grown up with and it's just you see a lot of stuff and so you're you're always seeing stuff and then it gets in your head and you can't stop thinking about it and so eventually it like depending on what you see, usually there's a lot of stuff out there and it's just like ah oh, so, uh, so if you can laugh about it so I would see these people laughing about it, but then Robin would just kill himself, so... <laughs> I don't know, what the fuck? I can't. There's any hope for me. It's always going to be too soon to fucking Robin Williams. So. I'll be thinking about that on my deathbed, like, what are you doing, buddy? Tash Adams? Anyway, so, um, you know, I know now what it takes to be a comedian. Like, I'm gonna have to show you my dick. <laughs> <laughs> I just, this is for Louis C.K. I'll just. No. I won't do that. I stand behind Louis C.K., you know, like, I don't, uh, I don't, I haven't watched any of his comedy since that happened, and it's kind of shitty because he's a funny guy, but what he did is what he did, and I'm a feminist, so I have to, can't watch any of his comedy. But I do stand behind him. Um, just because I don't want to see his dick, so if I'm a comedian, I'm going to have to be way back here. You, know, you don't want to sneak up on the guy, especially me, because like, from behind, if I were wearing, you know, like I'm just here at the bar and then I feel something on my shoulder, it's like, I'm looking at the fucking Louis C.K. It's like, like he's putting a ponytail around Louis. But, uh, you know, like, all these other comedians are, are just, you know, they're dropping the ball. I don't know what it is about comedy and, and assaulting people, but uh, it's not going to be what I'm about, you know. And uh, so, it's just, I'm not going to assault any of you tonight. <laughs> As I said, I wrote a lot of these jokes. I've never done uh, comedy, so I've been writing jokes my whole life. But basically, like, after you write a joke, if you don't tell it, then it just doesn't work. Like I've got a bunch of jokes about the Friends series and all this stuff, but nobody knows what Friends is. And like, they gotta, gotta throw all that stuff out. So basically, I wrote 17 pages of new material. Because, like I said, ADHD. 
and I'm just going to go through it. So, when I was younger, I did want to be an archaeologist, I thought. I always thought that was cool, but as I got older, I realized I just wanted to be Indiana Jones. <laughs> that's not a job. <laughs> I looked. <laughs> I tried to even like start a course for it. I was like selling the whole archaeology like slash whips thing. Like I don't know if people use whips these days. But, uh, but it's good because I mean, but it's not just comedians either. It's like actors are dropping the ball. I don't know if you saw like uh, who was it? Uh, oh yeah, Bill Cosby, who's also an actor, but he's a comedian and it's like kind of crossing the borders, but I haven't watched the Cosby show either since that happened. Like, does anyone here watch the Cosby show still? Can you do that? You can watch the comedy show? Can you watch the Cosby show? Okay. You just, there was like three episodes where Bill wasn't actually on it. I watched those over and over again. <laughs> and it's like, uh, it's the one with Rudy in the dream, and it's all just like, shh, shh, shh. it just doesn't get me there. I know it's like 12 more seasons. But uh, I don't know when like, Bill is just going to go ahead and, and apologize so that we can all get back to watching the Cosby Show. And, uh, or maybe we'll just burn all of the Cosby Show DVDs that we bought and spent all that money because I don't think anyone's going to buy them. But you also saw Hollywood's all about about Kevin Spacey's latest uh, touching performance. You see that one? <laughs> he got a lot of rave reviews for that. I think they had to like blue screen him out of a bunch of movies. And I think he's probably maybe the first person not to die that they had to remove from the movie, which is like, I don't think they did off people for that. But. And then Gian Gomeshi, he did like, you know, I think this is good because we look up to these people and it shows that they're just human and they're actually like really creepy people and you shouldn't look up to them because just because they can get up on stage and do a bunch of stuff doesn't give them the right to do that kind of stuff. But Gian Gomeshi's back on the dating scene in Toronto. And he's been, uh, he's been seen out as far as he's asking young girls if he can kick them. Okay, no. <laughs> For those of you out there who are over 16, kick is a messenger app. Oh. Yeah, so, do you know she wants to kick these girls? But that one didn't work. That's okay. I've got a couple of ways I can throw away. I've got lots here. So I'm just going to like, I'm going to end on a high note. You're going to be laughing and I'm just going to drop the mic and walk away. <laughs> I love telling nar narcissists to enjoy themselves. You ever do that? <laughs> See some? You enjoy yourself, baby. There's a psych medium in, uh, in Port Alberni there. And I showed up for an appointment. I didn't make an appointment, but I showed up. And she, what are you doing here? <laughs> well, you should know, you're a psychic medium. <laughs> I didn't realize I had to make an appointment. You're in a second. You just show up and you tell me the future. <laughs> you can't be busy. You knew I was coming. <laughs> I called her a fake and I ran away. <laughs> she, she didn't care. She saw that coming too. <laughs> I'm a comedy virgin, so I mean, chances are I'm going to suck, right? It's going to happen. It's going to be awkward. It's going to be forced. Chances are I'm going to leave you wanting more. Ed Hill will show up like some, you know, here I am. It's just how it goes. I'm just going to look up all of Ed's jokes and just tell them. I thought it would be really weird to fight a comedian. He's like hitting you and just laughing. He's like, I really like you. It's an homage. I think I'll probably get like three pages in. And, uh, usually in a comedy club, when it's time to get off, they'll like flash a light at the back. So as soon as you think I've gone into like a time, and just flash a light. But, uh, we are not light. Well, then I'm just going to talk forever. <laughs> Why do you get the bell? I feel like Britney oh, Spears up here. <laughs> or Elian Gonzalez or something. It's like, Jesus. No, it's nice. I'm definitely not cold. Uh, I can tell just by looking, I can't really see a lot of you people, but those people on the front rows, I can tell that you guys do not have your sensi orders in. So if you need a catalog, you just get at me after the show. Okay? I get a bunch. My aunt's in a gig. Yeah, she sends them to me. She's just like, you want to use all your sensi? And I'm just like, no one's commenting, so I call them in hey, here. Mark, I really need some sensi. She sends them, and I tell her that I ordered them, and I just send her checks. 
for since he's like mom and she doesn't even know or care. She's like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, lucky I'm I'm just the opener. I'm just here to get you warmed up. I'm like I'm like your sister in a seat through nighty, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Can't, it's just gonna get you in that mood, right? It's like, it's like your it's like your aunt's side boob. <laughs> you're not gonna tell your friends about me, but you're gonna you're definitely not going to look away, right? Like, uh, for the ladies, I'm like a vibrator. Right? Yeah. I'm just not going to cut it. But, uh, yeah. Like I said, you know, I've never said any of this to anyone before, and so I'm a little nervous. I'm like, Usually those words are then followed by, so take it slowly and tell me, when was the first time you met Harvey Weinstein? <laughs> He's a jerk too. <laughs> you a bunch of movies for me. They're all movie buffs, so it's like, this has been a bad month. <laughs> you know? It's good. The comedy came to Yuki because that wasn't really me getting off stage, was it? That was just a joke. I thought I was so pretty not all getting off stage. I'm only at page two here. <laughs> it's good the comedy came to Yuki because we, and in Yuki, you have to learn to laugh. It's like you've got three kinds of laughter in Yuki. You've got the laughter from people who try and pronounce Yuki. You clit? You clit? Where did you go? You, you clit? You stuck you? Oh, what do you clit? You clit? You clit? And you laugh at the people who come into town and try and navigate that corner around the church when I'm sitting there at the stop sign. Like, <laughs> Can't you see it's a one way stop sign? Don't you understand there's three way go and one way? And then there's a the pull off and. And put a big bar there with no parking. <laughs> and there's that sort of laughter and such. And there's that kind of like... You wake up on day 50 of the rain. It's raining again. Dogs are staring at the window like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh. You get the urge to go out and start rounding up animals two by two. Marching them off. Come on. Posting on trading posts. Is there an arc that I'm not aware of? Are we supposed to be lining up somewhere? I figure with like I get a whole bunch of jokes out to go into this one. Right? <sighs> I wrote up a bunch of long jokes, but I'm probably not gonna tell them unless you guys want to stick around afterwards. Maybe I could just spend the night here on the stage. <laughs> Like, There's just too many jokes. I don't want to give you too much. It was only 20 bucks, and I feel like I wrote like $500 worth of jokes. <laughs> Are you only going to get 20 bucks for it? I think we're probably at like 7 bucks. <laughs> there you go, laughing at 7 bucks. That's like 7 50 So just keep, you know, 7 50 6 7 8 9 10 Eight bucks. <laughs> like all this stuff about internet porn, I know we all we got like high speed here in Yuki now, so porn came just like rushing down the train. It was just like, do, 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 and it got to the intersection and it was like, do I go to Dufino or do I go to Yuki? Who wants porn more? A bunch of porn went that way and a bunch of porn went this way. And it just kind of exploded onto the area like things that happen when you're looking at porn. <laughs> Something I didn't realize about Yuki, I moved to Yuki and then I realized, like, Mother Nature, she's a squirter. <laughs> you know? They don't teach you that in school. Mother Nature's a squirter. They also don't teach you to, like, not use the words mother and squirter in the same joke, because it's like, puts up a bad thing in your mind's eye. But most of us have, like, pink eye in our mind's eye by now anyways, because of that porn, so. It doesn't even matter.
I grew up in the heyday of internet and I had the skills to look it up and that was dangerous. I was like a little geek and house full of women and it's like, ah. It was just that inevitable I was going to fall in love with women because they're everywhere and you just can't touch them. It's like being in a museum or something. It's like, I don't know if they have things like that, like that Oedipus Rex complex or something like that. And you fall in love with your mother. And that's not the case with me, but I have four <laughs> sisters and they all had friends. And so there was just women everywhere. And uh, you couldn't even, like, there wasn't porn around. So when you wanted to see porn, you had to walk down to the photo lab and they had this like, window. You'd stand there and you'd watch other people's photos go by. <laughs> and just like, your mom would be shopping and you just kind of mull around and you'd be like, Looking for some pictures, like, okay, there we go. Something, and you had like five seconds to put it in your spank bank. You had like, put the watch as it rolled past, and it's like that was it, it was gone, and you ran home, and your eyes closed, like, don't forget, don't forget. That was it, that was porn when I was a kid. Because I had no guys around to leave like magazines, it was like nothing. So, I was going to go into this long bit about like, uh, all the weird internet porn just to make you guys feel good about yourselves because I know everyone's like got a broad range of people here so everyone's got their little kinks but I'll just I'll end off my set here by uh, just listing some of the funny things that I found on the internet just to make you feel a little bit better because you know we're not everyone's got something but it's not weird everyone's just who they are so um, number five was and this wasn't something that I actually found but I did find it when I was looking a friend one time tried to tried to like bond with me over it. We were sitting having beers one day and something to do and he's like, dude, you ever seen a uh, cake part? Cake part? Cake part? You ever seen a cake part? <laughs> cake part? I said, yeah, you ever seen a cake part? No, I haven't seen a cake part. Oh, oh you yeah, never seen a cake part. Hold on a second here, let me pull this up. Cakepart.com. And it's just a girl and she comes in. It's not really that bad because nothing really happens. Girl comes in. It's Takes pants down, she sits on a cake. That's it. She doesn't fuck. <laughs> yeah. No guys involved, no debauchery. Ruin a cake. It's the worst part. And there was this guy back when I was like a, a worker back in Ontario, and every time this, uh, and this is just going to ruin a song for you, so I'm sorry here, but every time this Jack and Diane song came on, and then this job site was like once a day, sometimes twice a day. Yeah, Jack and Diane! Stuck it on a chili dog outside the taste of cream. And you come running into the, you know what a chili dog is, don't you? No, I don't know what a chili dog is the first time, the tenth time. Oh, uh, chili dogs, I mean, you know. And I guess there's these people, some people like to have, we call it kitty sex. You know, kitty sex. And then some people like this thing called scat, which is gross. It's like poo. I'm not into poo. It's funny, like when it comes into my body, I'm like, mm, poo. <laughs> like, don't touch me. I don't like poo. But some people like poo, and then some people put it together, and that's a chili dog. Put some poo on the boobs, and you get poo in there. Like a chili dog. Come on. No, I can't listen. To And then the other, the other ones aren't that really bad. It's like the, this eye licking. Apparently, that's a thing. People like that. With the eye. <laughs> I don't even want to touch my eye. So. Another one is like, just to make you feel good about yourself. Some people like to, to lube up their cars. They'll find little crevices in their cars. It's not that weird. It's no one gets hurt. So. You don't want to drop your change down in there. But. <laughs> and then the last one I think I'm going to let you discover. I'll just leave it because I don't want to get too blue. Finally, after the show, I'll talk about it. I think that's where I should leave it because we're waving at it. Fuck off stage, man. <laughs> but, yeah, if you guys want to come and uh, I've got like 17 pages of material here. So we'll probably see you again. Kevin <laughs> David, thank you.